The birth of an original idea is a rare event. When that idea happens to be something of profound beauty, the reaction is particularly intense and personal. Ideas that touch our intellect and our senses are compelling. A mind capable of such creation, not just once, but many times over, is remarkable. This is the story of Elsa Peretti, a ferociously independent thinker who revolutionized the world of design, especially jewelry design. The stunning originality of her evocative organic shapes with their undulating surfaces enchanted the world. Jewelry is not fashion, she says. It has to last, not be discarded as soon as something else comes along. Peretti was born in Florence and grew up in Rome, the daughter of an important Roman family who carefully attended to her formal education. As a child, she revealed an intense interest in the natural world, a power of observation that would later fire her imagination. A striking young woman, Elsa began a modeling career in Barcelona, Europe's exciting cultural nucleus of the early 1960s. This was to be a life-altering experience that culminated in a stunning design career. She studied the visceral architecture of Antoni Gaudi. She sat for the Spanish surrealist Salvador Dali and soon joined his artistic Barcelona coterie. Hungry for new ideas, Peretti developed a fascination with sculpture. It piqued her interest in the possibilities of beautiful metallic surfaces. Her eye was drawn to powerful sculptural shapes. Then she began to travel the world to Japan, where she met gifted artists and the extraordinary artisans that would later play such an important role in her work. Then on to Hong Kong in 1968, Peretti admired and collected Asian art. She shared Chinese artists' love of nature and genius for transforming symbols into dimensions. It was inevitable that Elsa Peretti would eventually be drawn to New York City. Here was an intoxicating mixture of cultures, ideas, and creative ferment. She spent time with Truman Capote, Liza Minnelli, and Andy Warhol and his entourage. Her circle included the gifted Joe Eula and all the people who mattered. Vogue editor Diana Vreeland sought her out. She was a regular at Studio 54, dancing till dawn. Elsa dove headfirst into the New York fashion world. Her educated sophistication dovetailed perfectly with this fertile environment. She designed her first jewelry for the collections of Giorgio di Sant'Angelo. She was a model for the celebrated photographer Helmut Newton. She collaborated with a photographer hero, initiating a lifelong creative association. And with Halston, the brilliant fashion designer, Peretti was muse, model, and jewelry designer. They were a team. Elsa's time had come. This impassioned artist had an instinct for style that came to her intuitively, from a career in modeling, friendships with top fashion designers, and an obsession with craftsmanship perfection. In June 1974, the New York City Press discovered that Elsa Peretti had joined Tiffany and Company as a named jewelry designer. Suddenly, this tall, striking Italian with a husky voice was the talk of the town. Newsweek magazine ran a glowing cover story. Her jewelry sold out. Peretti's fresh organic ideas poured forth in a torrent. Fueled by a mind brimming with rich, inspirational material. Peretti remembered being among the young women of Portofino who would carry a single gardenia in their hands. Worried that her flower would not live, she placed it in a small water bottle that she wore around her neck. Later, 
Peretti meticulously crafted her bottles that became style icons instantaneously. It was the void within a Henry Moore sculpture that would inspire her most famous design, Open Heart. This evocative, sensual shape with its clean, simple lines enchanted the entire world. Elsa, always obsessive over the details of craftsmanship, worked for months alongside the most gifted artisans she could find. When hung on a silver chain or a strand of woven silk cord, her open heart would move gracefully, hypnotically. The genius of this piece was its total sophistication and lack of sentimentality. In the misty afternoon light of Jaipur, India, Peretti found the idea for her mesh collection. Gold or silver intricately woven into a fabric that would flow like water, drape like silk, following the body's movements and contours. Endlessly fascinating, always changing, this innovative jewelry is eternally modern. So enchanted was Elsa over the endless possibilities of this fabric. She designed a mesh bra, which, of course, ignited a controversy that delighted her. A lingering memory of a candlelit flamenco dancer's earring would return to the artist years later and inspire the wonderful Sevillana. Her fixation on craftsmanship perfection drove her to find the artisan who still practiced the ancient 70-step lacquering process in Japan. In Hong Kong, she sought out the gifted hands that could hand carve crystal beads outside and inside. Only Elsa Peretti would have the audacity and design genius to totally reconceive the idea of the diamond necklace. She playfully called it Diamonds by the Yard. This was yet another example of her gift of linear distillation, her ability to reduce an idea to its absolute essential. Enchanting bezel-set diamonds floating on a gold chain, lighting the face. What could be more elegant? And this was a diamond necklace that could be worn during the day, every day for that matter. Peretti explores nature with the acumen of a scientist and the discrimination of an artist. She delights in distilling nature's forms. Style is to be simple, she says. I like to push myself to achieve a certain quality and eliminate the excess detail. The touch, the feeling of these organic designs is important to Elsa, never more so than in her bean design. This natural shape, the humble seed of life so smooth in the hand, a perfect balance of material, form, and surface. The voluptuous teardrop sensual to the eye and touch. For her, this evocative design was a talisman. She writes in her notes, A long time ago, I tried to fight Il Mio Dolore by exercising it and wearing the shape of a tear in silver around my neck. The dangerous, the unexpected, the forbidden was always intriguing. For many months, Elsa carried in her bag the rattle from a rattlesnake. This ultimately inspired her articulated snake necklace. The poisonous scorpions around her home in Spain fascinated her as well. This was a new kind of jewelry that felt as good as it looked. But it was a human bone that fascinated a young Elsa Peretti most of all. So much so, she defied her mother and spirited one away from the ossuary of a 17th century church. Later, she observed, things forbidden remain with you forever. And her bone cuff is a design that will remain forever. Elsa lives in many homes, Barcelona, New York, Rome, Tuscany, but her spiritual home the home that holds her heart and soul, the home she has spent a lifetime restoring, is the 13th century Spanish village, said Martivelle. Here, 
Amid stone houses and steep alleyways, she surrounds herself with beautiful, unpretentious objects. Here, she finds inspiration. Here, she appropriates what is timeless. In her words, I go to Spain to think, I come to New York to act. Peretti calls them her objects. By that she means objects for the home. She has a passion for the table where she brings together her friends and craftsmen. Each of these pieces is really a sculpture, of course, the product of her modern reductivist eye. But as in all her work, these are never fussy or ornamental. They are wonderfully practical. Like her jewelry, they are a delight to behold, irresistible to touch, and the very definition of form serving function. Her pad of a sterling silver flatware with its soft fluid lines is a joy to hold in the hand. And placed on the table, its organic presence complements everything. Her sinuous bone candlesticks, inspired by Italian altarpieces, give the table a charged air, a place where important events will unfold naturally. Peretti's touch is clearly evident in all her work, but in thumbprint, there it is, this time figuratively and literally. Over the years, the world has recognized Elsa Peretti with countless awards. Among them, the coveted Coty Award, the Council of Fashion Designers of America Award, and an honorary doctorate from the Fashion Institute of Technology. The list of Peretti exhibitions is extensive. In her Fashion Institute of Technology exhibition entitled 15 of My 50, Executive Director Richard Martin wrote of Elsa's genius, all form has its lingering memory, and every shape is the definitive best. In 2009, the British Museum honored Elsa Peretti with an exhibition and included her in their permanent 20th century collection. Every minute, every day, somewhere in the world, a woman finds herself drawn to the creations of Elsa Peretti. These are not designs she was taught to appreciate. Her attraction is instinctive and intuitive. Peretti's organic reductionist forms have a primal and transformational force that is revolutionary. Original beauty that is forever modern. <laughs>